It's time for What You Need to Know, where you'll learn the strategies and tools you need to grow your YouTube channel. Here's your host, Nicole Sanchez. Today, I'm going to share with you tips and tricks that will help you speed up the success of your YouTube channel and save you a lot of time and money and headache. This is all from personal experience when I started my YouTube channel. Pretty spur of the moment, YouTube was becoming very popular. I was starting to watch it. And I realized that there weren't a lot of people over 40 talking about beauty. And I thought, hey, I could do this. So I took my husband's camera, kind of set it up in our room, really had no lighting other than a window. And I decided to review a subscription box type of a product. Okay, I had my video, it was all right. I mean, I knew my product. I think that the information I gave was good. And then I had this video that I had to edit that I'd never video edited before. I always, when I had done videos, it was at work and other people would edit a video for me. So I suddenly had to sit down and try to edit. So I didn't want to attempt Premiere Pro at that point because I had played with Photoshop and I knew that it wasn't a very, I guess, to a new user, user-friendly type of a, a platform. Uh, it, it really just looked pretty intimidating. So I tried a different program. I didn't have Mac either. So I didn't have, you know, the nice, you know, easy interface of that. I forgot what it was called. It was called Vegas Pro or something. I tried that. And then I tried a different one, you know, several weeks later. And finally I got into Premiere Pro and I've stayed there. And it actually wasn't as bad as I thought to learn it. Uh, but first of all, have some sort of video editing experience because I was up till three in the morning constantly trying to figure out how to video edit. So take a little Linda course or just go onto YouTube, watch videos, or if you're using Premiere Pro, you know, they have great videos that explain how to do things uh, and try to get a basic knowledge because it will save you so much frustration or hire somebody. If you can hire somebody, hire somebody. I just kind of had a... I really wanted to edit my own videos because I, I had a need to really put the message out there that I wanted and sometimes even multiple takes or things like that. You know, I really wanted to make it way, you know, the way I wanted and how was someone else going to necessarily choose that. So um, that is one thing I would say, try to get some video editing experience or have someone to help you with that because that was a big headache. The second thing, uh, you know, camera wise, I used my husband's old camera for quite a while. And then later I bought a newer one. I bought the Panasonic FC 1000. I don't know, it was like a thousand dollar camera or so. It was a little bit more than, um, and, and it was, it was good, but you know, it did stop recording after about 14 to 18 minutes, uh, just randomly. So that was kind of a pain, but other than that, it was really, really good. But what I should have really done is invested in better lighting. Like I said, I started using kind of just, you know, the, the window light, which is fine, but you can't always shoot during the daytime. At least I couldn't because I had a full-time job and I had kids and, you know, I was doing this a lot at night. So I, then I bought that just when I didn't buy it, I just took this one light that we had and I put a really good bulb in it, a bulb. I think I actually stole out of a lamp that we had that was, um, supposed to, you know, make things look like, like daylight if you were doing crafts or something like that. And then I bought another kind of light that I bought. I've got these two lights I still use. They're on the side here. Um, I bought, then I bought a, a $500 ring light. I kept adding lights kind of over a year and a half. And I, if I just buckled down and bought my, you know, big uh, light that I have here now, that's kind of a professional level light. It's a Kino Flow Diva light that is just this one big panel. I have a diffuser over it. That made such a difference. It made my camera just look like I got a new camera really because suddenly everything looks so much more vibrant and more evenly lit and it's wonderful. Not super portable, it's kind of heavy, but uh, it, it is fantastic. So I would really try to figure out your lighting and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to buy what I did, but I was very kind of mishmash and haphazard about it. And I should have, you know, maybe even just hired a lighting person to come out for an hour or so and help set me up or 
really done a lot more research into lighting I was buying rather than kind of haphazardly, you know, kind of buying things. In some cases, you do get what you pay for. Before I got the ring light that I have, that I really do like, and I have used on many occasions for other things, so it's coming handy, but I had ordered just kind of whatever was on Amazon. It was some kind of a tube light. It, it was just, it just wasn't very good. So then I got this, it's actually also called Diva, but it's different. It's a Diva Pro ring light, I think it is, and it has like, I think almost 500 little LEDs in a circle. And, and like I said, I've used it for other things since, but that used to be my main light that I used, but it really didn't do the job for me. So do some research into your lighting setup. So you don't kind of waste $50 here, a couple hundred dollars there. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I could have bought like a really good thousand dollar lighting setup uh, by the time we're done with it. But if you can shoot in front of, you know, the window, I've had some beautiful results with that. But again, I was filming so much at night. That was really difficult to you know have to try to to do all the time uh, then the other thing is audio i was just using the audio for my camera to start and one time a friend was like you know it sounds like echoey i'm like you know you're right and this is before i mean now they have this free thing that adobe has it's really you know kind of for podcasts but if you render out an a wave file of your your audio um of your video which i'll do for this one throw it into this free you know, apps that they have online and then it comes back and it's, it's helps your video so much. It's wonderful. Uh, but then I got like this little shotgun road mic that I, you know, clip on top of that camera and it made a world of difference. It's so much better. Now I use Rode Wireless Go 2 where uh, it actually comes with two that you like would clip onto people <laughs> and then one that you attach to your camera. And that is a wonderful setup. They're not even expensive. Wait, let me see really quickly how much those are. Yeah, it's like $300 for that setup. And uh, the only thing you have to buy in addition is the little lab mic to plug into it. Um, you don't want, they're like a little box. Here, wait, let me show you. Uh, <laughs> they're like a little box like this. And so then you attach you know, the little loud mic that then you need to clip onto yourself, which I know clipped here, hidden under my hair. I'm kind of testing, trying it out in different places. I don't really like it when it's just kind of in the shirt. It, it didn't sound as good. Uh, then the last video, I think I had it kind of here and I'm trying it up here. I'm trying to figure out where I get the best sound. So um, always learning, always trying to improve. Another little tip that'll save you a lot of time and frustration is before you start filming in earnest, do a little test. Just say something and then just go play it back and look at it. Make sure there's nothing weird with your lighting. Then there's nothing stuff in your teeth <laughs> that your audio is working. Um, you know, all that, that it, it'll make such, such a difference because, you know, and double check your battery life. Make sure you've checked, you know, your video, um, you know, your card to see if you have enough space on there because there's nothing more frustrating than you're on a roll in the middle of a video and then it, you know, you lose battery or your card runs out of room and they have to find one or empty it off, you know, so, um, and then speaking of your video cards, you know, your memory cards, you are your own DIT person. You have to manage all these videos that you're shooting, right? And at first you'll think, oh, you know, I know what they are, they're in there, but I really tried, and I figured this out really quickly, to when I'm done shooting, no matter what time it is, no matter how tired I am, to download them onto my computer or an external drive and label them so I know what they are. Because there's nothing worse than you shoot and shoot and shoot, maybe we've gotten around to editing, um, or you need to go back to find something, and you just have all this stuff in the car and you just sit there forever doing it. So if you're just doing it with you know, a few videos, it's so much easier than later having you know, this fully loaded memory card that has just so much stuff on it. So highly recommend kind of coming up with a system and naming convention. I tend to use the date, you know, so, you know, if it was, you know, June 2nd of 23, I'd put, you know, 060223, and then I would put the subject of that. And then I would have a folder with unedited files and edited and that made things a lot easier to you know go back because sometimes you might be doing a video on something and you're like oh i could put a clip of this other thing that i did in there and then you have to find it <laughs> unless you want to download off of youtube and maybe that clip you want isn't in there but you know you sent something or did something or showed something that you want 
it makes life so much easier. So I'd highly recommend coming up with a system for your file management. Another thing I would highly recommend you educate yourself on is thumbnails. Thumbnails are what stop people in their scroll and hopefully get them to click on your video. I just did a video about that actually. So my previous video to this one is all about thumbnails. So I would highly recommend figuring out thumbnails because you can put out the best video in the world and if you have a terrible thumbnail, you're gonna have so many people that don't click on it just because they don't realize what a great video it is. So that's something you have to put a lot of thought into as well as your titles. Tagging is no longer really a big deal. Tagging used to be a big deal because that's what told YouTube what your video is about. Now YouTube even says, you know, really if you have common misspellings of maybe it's your channel name or something you talk about that people might be searching for, put that in there, but they're kind of like, eh, don't even worry about it that much. I mean, I tried to upload with some basic, um, you know, tags of, of what the video is about, but I don't spend a lot of time on that anymore. It used to be something I spent a lot of time on. I would say spend more time than on your description and of course your title, title, you know, thumbnail, then title, then description. And in your description, as well as in your intro, what you're saying, really try to express clearly and concisely what you're talking about, because that also helps the algorithm know what your video is about, because it's looking at your thumbnail, it is reading your title, it's reading your description, and that can help kind of first search. And um, also, Another thing that was really interesting that I did one time that was completely, I just did it, it wasn't on purpose, but you know, now that I figured that out is if you are talking about a subject that is very popular or that somebody else very popular has talked about, you know, if you mention them, if that is part of what you're talking about, the algorithm picks up on that too and might, you know, match you and recommend you with other videos on a particular topic. So I'm not saying it's their name drops, drop things that aren't, aren't true, but you know, that is something that worked out for me when I did a video about, you know, two different little mini clip on ring lights and Nikki tutorials had done that recently. Well, had talked about one of these and I just mentioned, oh yeah, this is the one Nikki tutorials likes a lot. This is a different one. Let's see what's better. And I'll tell you why, you know, and I mentioned Nikki tutorials and I, in my description put, I'm looking at two different, you know, ring lights and one of the Nikki tutorials recently shouted out. So, you know, something like that. I don't remember it was like years ago, but that video did incredibly well. And I think what happened is I started getting recommended along with her video and she had, you know, million or 2 million, or I don't know at that point, she had a lot of subscribers, not as many as she has now. I think she's like 10 million now or something, uh, but, but that really helped also. So you can kind of think of little things like that. And if you make a playlist, playlists are really great also because it'll kind of help you to understand how your videos, you know, are kind of go together, right? So with me, if I had a whole bunch on different hairsprays, that could be a playlist. I could have a shampoo and conditioner playlist or, you know, if, I'm talking beauty now, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? But in those playlists, you don't only have to have your own videos. You could also put in there another video that you like that's about that particular topic. And that also helps YouTube clue in. So there's lots of things you can do in terms of kind of little tweaks like that that could help you. And, or also like in your, you know, video, when you publish a video, let's say I have video A that relates to video B. Well, in video A, I should say something about video B because hopefully I planned this out well enough to know plan that video B is coming. And in video B, I should mention video A and why they should go watch that or might want to in a natural way, not just at the end, like if you're working in the conversation. And then also in the description below, do the same thing. You know, let them know if you want them to learn more about the companion product to this or I don't know if you did one about cars, you know, the new, you know, Aston Martin or Maserati, let's say, and you talk about how it compares to some other car, you know, you cross reference your video to that other car and let people know about that. And that way the viewer is being told in the video and they see it and have in the link in your description to go over there and watch that. And YouTube loves 
when people stay on the platform. That's what they want, right? So that people are watching videos, enjoying the videos, and watching ads. So, you know, you actually get kind of dinged if people are watching your video and then they go off the platform. It's not a big ding, but if they go watch another video, even if it's not yours, you kind of get credit um, from what, from that they kept watching and stayed on the platform. So it's not the end all if they go somewhere else. I mean, obviously it's nice if they stay on your channel or giving you watch time, but really what YouTube wants is happy, satisfied viewers who are staying on the pla on, on the platform. So you just have to get them to click on your video, hence the thumbnail and title to get their attention. So those are some things I would really try to educate myself on sooner rather than later. So you don't have a lot of time wasted where you are putting out all these videos and not optimizing, right? Because it's a lot of work. I don't think anybody understands how much work it is to be your own, you know, writer, director, you do the lighting, you do the, you know, the um, video footage management, you are the editor, you are the, you are the, the writer of, and the artist of the thumbnails. And there's just so much around it. It takes a lot of time, unless you somehow are lucky enough to, be able to hire all this out, maybe your business in that case, really, it might behoove you to spend your time building your business and let somebody else do a lot of the work on the videos for you. You know, it really just becomes a time management issue in that case too. So that's another thing to look at um, when you start this type of thing. How often do you want to put out videos? What is that going to cost you in terms of your time, not just your money? Because time is a huge, huge thing when you're a YouTube creator. When I started, I was up till all hours all the time. And my husband was like, are you ever going to sleep again? I'm like... I'm trying, but I'm going to get my video out. And it was just a passion for me and I love doing it. So I did it. And even now it's pretty late at night and here I am filming a video. One thing a lot of people ask is how long should a video be? For a while, people were saying, oh, it needs to be over 10 minutes. I think it might be eight minutes now because that's when YouTube can run the mid-roll ads, which isn't a bad thing because then you get more ad you know, revenue in there. But really it's just as long as the content is good because you want people to hang in there and watch it. So if you're just rambling on to make a video longer <laughs> and then people are going to stop watching anyway, you're just kind of damaging your percentage of watch time, right? If you have a 10 minute video that should have ended at six minutes, you know, what's that other four minutes about, you know, really just try to make the videos as educational and fun and entertaining as possible, right? Or it doesn't actually be all those three things at once. It could be just educational. It could be just entertaining or it could be informational and, and entertaining, right? What do they call that? Infotainment, right? Uh, to try to keep people with you and uh, watching the video. But length really is as long as the content is good and people will enjoy it and want to watch it. When I started my channel, I did not understand what a two-way street YouTube was. I thought, hey, I'm putting video out there. Yeah, I guess there'll be some comments. But I didn't realize how much you actually interacted with your audience. There are videos that I have that have just hundreds of comments. And it's not always just, oh, good video. It will be like something, oh, wow, this was so helpful to me because, you know, X, Y, Z. Or, boy, you saved me a lot of time. Or, wow. I was researching this for my mom and found your video and it's so helpful. And they, and they ask really good questions a lot of times. And I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had a lot of, you know, awful people. And once in a while you get someone who's kind of a booger, right? You can just always delete that comment, but you can control those comments because you can always delete something. And then you can always hold certain types of comments for review. If you go, you know, into your uh, YouTube dashboard there, is an area where you can set parameters for your your comments you know and it's everything from you know bad words to you know holding certain types for for um for review so you know make sure to go in there and and check that out too i hope you found this helpful if you have any tips that i had missed put them down below in the comments and uh, share with the community that'd be really nice of you and thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video